All right, everybody, it is your Saints News Network, New Orleans Saints minicamp update. He is John Hendricks, lead reporter here at Saints News Network, your Sports Illustrated fan nation site covering the New Orleans Saints. You can follow him on Twitter at John J. Hendricks and keep up with all of the fantastic work that we're doing over at Saints.media as well as SI.com slash NFL slash Saints. You can also... Follow me, Ross Jackson, Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter here as your senior writer and reporter over at St. Sue's Network as well. John, you were out at New Orleans Saints mini camp. Let's just get down. Let's let's get down to business. Might as well just keep it going. Uh, mm. <laughs> general thoughts on how things were, how you are and how mini camp went. Yeah, well, first of all, how I am is uh, I've got some nice tan lines going, so that's that's good. Uh, that's positive. Um, but no, I, I think uh, I, overall I'm good. It's going to be sad. I'm ready for training camp to be here tomorrow, right? And just right. I don't need this break, and it sucks because it's a six-week break and no more action until then, and we're going to be sitting here begging for football to come back. But, you know, this is just how things run. But, you know, look, as far as practice goes and the Saints stuff goes, the stuff that actually matters – uh, look, I feel hey, really hey, you good matter. about all the things. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I feel really good about what I've seen. I, I feel good about, you know, where Derek Carr is and where mm-hmm. he's been. Um, you know, I think the progression is there. I feel good about the weapons that we've seen. A little concerned about some of the injuries that's popped up with Rashid Shaheed and his groin and Chris Olave being a new one with his Achilles uh, inflammation. Mm-hmm. But Again, we'll see how things go. They got some time to get rid past that and such. But uh, you know, look, I'm encouraged by what I've seen from the offense, down from you know, everything starting with Derek Carr, Jameis Winston. I've been impressed with some of his stuff. We've got mm-hmm. a kicking battle coming in training camp. I'm really excited God, I for. I think there's so many position battles that are coming based off of what we've seen just so far. And we got to remember, phase three, no contact. Seven on right. seven is what we've seen. A little bit of team, but you know, Saints this week really have been working on situational and goal line, you know, or situational and red zone. And so we've seen the defense bring it. We've seen the offense bring it. And so again, it hasn't been one sided on anybody's uh, part. And so I think it's been a good mix of action that we've seen. And so a lot's happened without a lot happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think one of the things that y- you've highlighted so well in all your observation pieces, which you can find over at Saints.media, is that attendance was effectively 100%, even if not on the field, in the, you know, in the workrooms, in the locker room, in the classrooms, things like that. That's got to be pretty big for this team that is trying to sort of build that identity and build that cohesion early, yeah? Yeah. And so if you haven't read those observations, well, shame on you, but not really. But, you know, at any rate... <laughs> Uh, you know, but it's down to everybody. Right. And so even the guys that you haven't seen on the field, Cesar Ruiz is in the building, right? Nick Saldaveri Mm -hmm. is on the field. Guys like Miller Forrestal or Kendra Miller, or Eno Benjamin, they're on the field. Michael Thomas is on the field. He's doing a lot of work. He's doing a lot more work on Thursday, running full speed on some of his stuff and, and just working on kind of some route concepts, fades, all those types of different things. I think also another thing that's really encouraging is Trevor Penning taking part in mm. team stretching. That's huge. And, yeah, and I think it move. seems like smart. He's not, not like it's a earth shattering, but him being there and being on the field and just being around, that is some of the best news that you can receive. And so again, getting all these players back, it's definitely a good sign. You know, they've obviously had to cut some people today as they kind of have their, their training camp roster. So, so to speak, and they're probably going to be some more moves to be made. But again, I think you got to be encouraged by the attendance. I think you got to be encouraged by what you've seen on both sides of football and, and obviously in special teams too, that we've, again, I think there's a legitimate battle brewing there. One of the many that we're going to be paying so much attention to mm-hmm. when we do get to training camp. And the fact is that we're going to have some joint practices soon, all those types of things, but we got to wait about six weeks until we get there. Yeah, well, well, you know, we might end up having six different position battles to break down over the course of those six weeks, too, because I agree there's going to be a lot of that over the course of training camp. Let's start over on the offensive side real quick before we get into some of the moves that the Saints made on Thursday, the final day of mini camps. Um, Derek Carr, obviously, is the big story for the New Orleans Saints this offseason. Huge addition for them trying to improve that quarterback position. How did he look throughout mini camps and what stood out to you about him? Yeah, I think he looked strong. And look, at one point today, after seven on seven, as soon as he left the field, Jameis Winston didn't complete a pass and neither did Taysom Hill working in those red zones. And again, mm. it's not a big deal, but and it's not meant to flex or anything. But again, no, no. he does his thing. But Jameis 04 
Taysom O2. And then, you know, Jameis responded really well in, in two minute situational offense, too. But look, I think the thing to appreciate about Carr is he had a couple of touchdown passes in, you know, red zone, one to Alvin Kamara, kind of a rub route that got Pete Warner kind of tied up a little bit and uh, it, it was able to get in the end zone. And then he comes to Jawan Johnson, making a huge fade catch over Elante Taylor. I mean, that was the stuff that you just want to see. I mean, it, it's all mm-hmm. the exciting elements there, right? And so I think that's been kind of the, the biggest things is that you like the big plays, you like the different route concepts, stuff that you just haven't been accustomed to seeing. You like seeing Alvin Kamara running at full speed and just the way he's Alvin, right? And I think that's important to see. You like seeing uh, guys like Foster Moreau coming and getting a little bit more comfortable in this offense. Brian Edwards making one-handed catches, all these types of different elements. And so, look, I think it's just overall just been nice to see those different types of things. And then defensively, I've been excited to see how the rebounds happen for guys like Elante Taylor or Paulson Evo having a couple of pass breakups. I think the linebackers were exceptional today. Um, Nephi Sewell, Andrew yeah. Dow, you know, Anthony uh, Ori is, is another one. They had pass breakups. And again, a guy like Sewell breaks up a pass for Al- against Alvin. Same thing with Andrew Dow. This is not just like a third, fourth, fifth running back on the roster. This is Alvin Kamara they're breaking up passes against. And so that gets me excited about to see. Or, again, like I said, Paulson breaking up a couple passes. There's a reason why he's still the starter opposite Marshall and Lattimore. And again, that was always division. I still think that's division. Nothing against Elante Taylor, but I still think that's where they feel like their best, best option is at this point. But all those types of things, they all matter. It's even the kicking battle. Again, both kickers went six for six. They had some wind in New Orleans. It kind of felt like Chicago today, except <laughs> it was like 200 degrees hotter. But they had some wind going on that they had to deal with. They had to pass in the wind, too. So you get a little bit, not you know saying elements, but most of their games are indoors. But that was good to see that it's just like it's a hot day with some wind, and you still see these guys perform and show out. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like 14 of their 17 games indoors, 13 of their 17 mm-hmm. games indoors this season. But being able to show what you can do in those situations when there is when there are elements present is obviously huge, especially as you get into uh, kind of the playoff stretch. Um, you, you mentioned uh, the guys that got caught touchdowns today or, or Thursday regarding uh, Juwan Johnson, Alvin Kamara. We all saw Alvin Kamara catch a touchdown on Wednesday, but Chris Olave, big play on Wednesday. I know he missed Thursday with the uh, Achilles uh, inflammation, probably just trying to play it safe there to make sure that doesn't get, get any worse or doesn't turn into anything big. But how impressive has he been uh, as the offseason has continued? Yeah, before I get into Olave, let me not forget my boy Adam Prentice, the fullback. Oh, got to show the fullback, fullback season. Well. Fullback you know, season. it was funny because in just in the two-man offense, we're like, why is he on the field kind of, you know, nothing to disrespect. They ran a fullback screen. He did exceptional on that one. Then he comes and hits the, the out route near the flats to get in for the end zone to cap off Derek Carr's drive. Got to give some love to the fullback. Adam love Prentice. It. But, you know, talking about Chris Lavi, I mean, his play, again, we saw it too in OTAs, just something mm-hmm. where Derek Carr, again, I don't say it was a duck, but it was like just not his best throw. And yeah, I mean, he, 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 said, he said it wasn't his best. Throw yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to disrespect him, but, you know, he goes up over Marcus May and makes the catch. But it's something similar where this one was a really, really pretty thrown ball. And, uh, you know, Alave goes up over a, a defender and it's in double coverage, makes a catch, is in the touchdown. I mean, those are the things that you just love to see that gets you hyped. I mean, the offense after that was just electric. Like, I have not seen that offense respond like that in a practice in a long time. Mostly, it's the defense that does that because the defense is ramming it down their throat. Now, that might train right. change in training camp. But, uh, you know, look, man, Alave and the way he's been able to high point that ball, just make those contested catches, run the routes he's been able to run, just being active and, and just being able to just take a leap. And I think that's something, you know, you think about this draft class and, and Jeff Ireland, you know, there have been some times where, you know, look, 2017 was great, had some struggles there and in, in between, but I feel like this class that they've got this year, coupled with last year and getting some key development from these players, it spelled the difference between turning this franchise around and not. And I feel that I have to lean more to them turning things around, but guys like Alante Taylor are going to have an even bigger role this season. Um, you know, you just can't keep them off the field. And, and these rookies right. like Kendra Miller are going to play a big part. Nick Saldaveri, we ex- anticipate him pushing for, for a, a role as well and, and such. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's just scratching the surface, but 
guys like Alante playing up, Paulson Debo playing up, and then, you know, veterans that are still showing up too, like Bradley Roby playing extremely well. I think Marshawn Lattimore is another one too. I think he's yeah. he's back to Marshawn Lattimore form and somebody we're probably not even talking about, but he's looked exceptional too. Yeah. Uh, just sticking on the offensive group before we jump over to the defensive side, obviously I've been keeping up and reporting and writing about minicamp from afar. You were boots on the ground. Did Alvin Kamara look as good as he's looked in all of the videos that I've seen? Cause it looks like he's moving cleanly. looks like he's moving quickly. And I mean, the guy's like one of the most fun athletes to watch in person. So how did he look for you being there and, and being able to take it in? Well, I just quote Derek Carr. He said he turned to Jake Hayner after one of the routes. He says, like, bro, are you serious? Like, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> Our legs are like, what? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that kind of spells it for you. And and look, Alvin's yeah. route running has been – but it's something that just hasn't been, been utilized. And something as simple as a wheel route concept. This is somebody yeah. on a linebacker. If Alvin's on a linebacker, he's going to win almost 100% of the time. I mean, it's just how it is. And we hadn't seen that – what Detroit was maybe the last time I've seen a wheel route that was pulled off that was successful for the Saints team. I mm-hmm. think being able to utilize him better in the passing game, something in his strengths, and, and this is something that Dennis Allen had talked about publicly, saying that they want to take more of the load off of Alvin. He doesn't need to yep. be a three-down guy that's rushing three downs. They can get that first and second down if they wanted to to Jamal. They can put Alvin in there too, based off of what the matchups are, the situations and such. But they got a guy with Kendra Miller and Jamal Williams that can help run and kind of do the dirty work, so to speak. And they're going to develop guys like Jamal into a better pass catcher. Same thing with, mm-hmm. with uh, Kendra, but with Alvin, I mean, you throw him in the slot, you throw him all around out of the backfield. This guy can be something really special. And, and, you know, I don't think Josh Jacobs was the best threat coming out of the backfield, but he did grow, grew into something with Derek mm-hmm. Carr. And so I think with Kamara, you know, he's had those three straight years where he's had 80 plus receptions. I'm not saying he has 80 this year, but I can see his his target share going astronomically up. Um, of course, he's got to get past all that whole suspension. So he might not hit 80 this year. But again, right. I expect him to have a lot more of a definitive role going forward. And the biggest thing is all this hinges on Pete Carmichael and calling the plays. Derek Carr is going to be able to check out a lot of those plays and makes those pre-snap reads and such. But look, getting the ball to Alvin, getting it in his hands is always a smart thing. And, you know, when you have that defenses that aren't so focused on Alvin, I think this has been a problem and why they needed to upgrade the past couple of years is it's Alvin Kamara. And then, you know what, they had Marquez Callaway to, to worry about or other guys that right. were just kind of unknowns. When you have guys like Thomason or Alave or Shahid, guys that you just – know that their ability or, or Jawan or Foster or Taysom Hills, it takes the pressure off of somebody saying, let's key in on Alvin Kamara and stop him. You can't just stop Alvin this year. That's more people that have to be involved with, uh, with what you do when you attack the Saints. Yeah, stretching that those defenses horizontally so that they can't stack the box that gives you so many more things that you could do with mm. Alvin Kamara, allow him to get back to that complementary role or or a role that is complementary to the rest of the offense or complement and also complemented by the rest of the offense. Uh, Alvin Kamara in each of the last two years were his first two years since he's come into the NFL outside of maybe his rookie season in which he's had less than 300 routes run. Uh, period, let, let alone targets, let alone receptions, assuming he's available for the Saints, depending upon how often he's available for the Saints. I would expect that to be above 300 this time uh, in 2023 if he were to play a full season. We'll see how how much he actually gets to play. Uh, let's jump over to the defensive side of the football. Hard to gauge the, the trenches throughout mini camps and, and stuff like that. But when it comes to some of the young guys, Brian Brzee, Isaiah Foskey, Jordan Howden, how have you kind of been able to track a little bit of their progress? And obviously training camp is going to be bigger for them, but what have you seen from them so far? Yeah, well, what I'd say is is Brzee and uh, Howden have been in with first team reps. So when they were running kind of like into the, the you know, like a, a end of the game situation, Howden's in there with the one. Brzee's in there obviously doing some pass rush. They were using a three-man front. He was one of the guys that anchors in the middle – and Foskey was right alongside of him too. And, and so again, it's it's those types of things that I think, you know, you can't, there's no contact, so you can't gauge how this guy's doing. But one of the things I like about Brise that, that Cam had said today, he joked to Cam, you know, Cam, he's saying like when people were calling him Breeze or whatever, or something like his coach, one of the coaches, <laughs> he's like, You can't do that. 
And uh, <laughs> but he's just like how quick he's like, yep, I got it. Yep, I got it. When he's told something, mm. and so look mm. I, again, he's like he's like when we get past June or get into training camp, we'll see if he really has it and such. But you know, just having a confidence about you is is something that I've seen. And look, Jordan Howden again, nobody likes to watch special teams drills. Uh, besides probably me and you and maybe Nick, yeah. and Will, but uh, you yeah. know, maybe Mike too, <laughs> but uh, we watch special teams and look, Howden's been doing some stuff in the special teams game, just from his tackling and his smarts and his intelligence that I really like. Um, AT, AT Perry's kind of been up and down a little bit, but mm-hmm. again, he's, he's comes back and, and he's getting some, like one of the moments I appreciated today was the fact that Jameis Winston's sitting there talking to him, it was probably a 10, 15 second conversation, just kind of talking him through things. That's what you'd expect out of a veteran is, hey, this is where you yeah. need to be. This is what you need to do type thing, because he's a rookie. He's going to make mistakes. And so this is a, a, a rookie class that, I, again, I, I feel really confident about where they're going. Again, we talked about second year players. They're expecting a lot more from Trevor Penning, DeMarco Jackson, guys like that. But, you know, this class, I think, is going to make its mark. Maybe not felt as much this year, but again, you look at the secondary that's lost a lot of people this this off season. They brought in a lot of people to replace them, and and I feel good about that. The kind of an upgrade, so to speak. And so, look, I'm excited about Foskey and Brisey for sure. But it doesn't stop there. there. This whole entire draft class could make a huge impact. Absolutely. Now, uh, some of those linebackers you mentioned, Nephi Sewell, Andrew Dowell, those are not usually the names that we're accustomed to hearing when it comes to linebackers. So the the guys behind the starters, Demario Davis, uh, Pete Werner, how equipped are the Saints at that position? And I feel like bringing in veteran help there could still make a lot of sense. Do you? I, I think it makes a ton of sense. And so, hmm. look, I, I'm expecting – I would expect more from Zach Bond, but, you know, he got beat on a wheel route against Dalvin. And, of course – Who's not going to get? I don't care if it's Demario, if it's Pete. I don't. Pete. I don't even play. I, I wasn't even in the state, and I got beat by Alvin Kamara on a wheel. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. That's how it happens, man. You just that's, that's <laughs> Alvin oh, in a God. nutshell. It just yeah, <laughs> he just beat me on a wheel route, and I wasn't even paying attention. He caught me sleeping. But uh, you know, look, I I thought Zach Bond. He he's just. It's not frustrating. It's just man, you just see that he's close. Like he'll be yeah. there, and then he won't. Like you get beat on a drag mm. route, and it's just. He's four yards behind, whether it's a recognition issue or something else or just communication. I just don't know, right? And so between him, uh, Andrew Dow is more of a special teams guy. Nephi Sewell, Ryan Connolly, uh, you know, those guys are end up going to end up Ty Summers. They're more of your special teams guys. They're not known for situations where you're going to have them roll into a game. And so the Saints are going to have to make an interesting decision because those guys you mentioned, Sewell, Dow, Summers, and now Connolly, those are your primary special teams guys. You see it on kick returns. You see it on kickoffs. You see it in punt games. So, uh, again, if you're going to bring in as somebody else, you know, are they going to play special teams or are they going to be your guy that says, okay, are they going to replace – what you might believe that you have with DeMarco Jackson. I want to see more from DeMarco Jackson. I think he can be this year's Caden Ellis. He's got to improve a few different things, um, and but I think he has the potential there. But it would not shock me if they bring in somebody, a veteran guy from the linebacking group that's going to challenge a little bit. Same thing with the defensive line. I don't know necessarily on the interior. I think there could be a guy, most of those guys, like 30 and over category, so they would be rotational anyways, but – uh, mm-hmm. Pass rusher, you know, we've I've talked about Yannick Ngakwe until yeah. I'm blue in the face. He's got Drew Same. Rosenhaus now, so he's going to try to get paid. So I don't know if that's a realistic thing too now, but mm-hmm. never say never. But, um, you know, I would expect that's mostly where the, the moves to be made are going to be for the Saints. Yeah, that makes that makes a ton of sense. They've done so much work over in the secondary. They've done so much work on the offense in terms of uh, tight end, running back, even wide receiver. And we saw more of that work at wide receiver on Thursday and the Saint and, and the offensive line. The Saints waving uh, Malik Flowers, who was brought in as one of those guys that could potentially come in and help out as a return specialist, maybe a practice white guy that kind of has that, you know, Rashid Shahid ability. He and Rashid Shahid both tied for the FCS record of seven uh, kick return touchdowns in their career. He was an undrafted free agent. They moved on from Sir Roderick Thompson, who also came in uh, as a as a as a UDFA. Move on from Yasir Durant, the interior offensive lineman as well, which uh, it just hurts my heart because is there a guy nicer than Yasir Durant in, in the entire no. world? Like, 
It just doesn't exist. And so I'm hoping for a reunion there. Usually these cuts aren't always final. There's a lot of opportunity for these guys to still end up coming back. But in the midst of doing that, they sign uh, Lynn Bowden, who wide receiver experience, quarterback experience at Kentucky. But the Saints listed him in their announcement and their signing announcement as a running back, which was something that the Miami Dolphins and the uh, kind of did with him a little bit. The Raiders wanted to do with him back when they drafted him. Uh, but they bring in Lynn Bowden. They sign also Kiki Cody and uh, Cody. And then they also sign uh, guard center. Let's just call him interior offensive lineman, Billy Price. So some pretty, pretty solid moves there. Where do you see some of these guys potentially getting real looks at training camp? Yeah, well, I'll say this on Flowers. Something you pointed out before is that he was oh, yeah. having a little bit of difficulty fielding some some kicks. And look, you're, this is a quick learning curve you got to have. And so, look, I, I hopefully he puts it together. And you know, somebody like that, maybe he'll latch on another team. Maybe mm-hmm. it's development in, in one of the other leagues that help him out and such. Or maybe a team looks at him training camp. But look, I think you know these moves, seeing those wide receivers um, again, they were being used as returners you know they're Mm -hmm. obviously learning a little bit quick on the fly and you know veteran presence you're going to take mostly take that over a rookie in most scenarios that's why guys like kenny stills were a big part and guys like keith kirkwood i mean he's a veteran i think he's looked actually pretty sharp you know just giving some some love and credit where it's due but vets like that that hang on the league that are present in the league there's a reason why they are in some aspects and so look i'm interested to see and then with bowden you know it's interesting you bring him up as a running back because kirk Merritt, i mean technically a wide receiver but dennis allen saying he's in the running back room and i've yep. said this and you've caught kirk Merritt, uh you've talked to him you know him extremely well i'm not so sure that he's not going to be rb4 in this team i think he's new Dwayne washington with a little bit more upside just because he has the experience at wide receiver can be a threat in the running game. He was used a lot in red zone today for sure. So I'm interested to see more out of that. And it's just the life of the NFL is, you know, there's a expiration tag on everybody, you know, sadly. And so I was interested to see more Sir Roderick Thompson, but again, I can see the confidence in Kirk Merritt playing that makes somebody like him expendable guys like Ellis Merriweather. I think he's somebody that's probably maybe outperformed him a little bit too. And so, um, you know, you make it make sense. Right. And with Billy price, I think that could change quickly, 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 mm-hmm. quickly, depending on where Nick Saldaveri is at when he returns. Right. And I think with most of these guys, Dennis Allen saying only one guy's probably not going to be ready for training camp. I could speculate who that is, but I'm not going to, but <laughs> at the same time, um, you know, really where it goes is even with these guys at training camp, we're not expecting him full speed on day one. So and that's been right. said before Kendra Miller, I would be surprised and shocked if he's doing full reps on day one, but he will be out there and he should be in pads. Right. Same thing with yeah. Sal DeVere or Trevor Penning or Cesar Ruiz. So Billy Price is a guy where their second center right now is Alex Billstrom. He's a undrafted guy. Billy Price instantly pole vaults his way in there. And they've done this over the years with guys like Josh Andrews, you know, veterans like that, that could potentially have a, a bigger role and play games down the line. And in mm-hmm. terms of practice squad and calling up players and stuff. So look, moves are moves and it's unfortunate part of the business, but it happens. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's look next. Oh, one of the other things I was going to mention too, um, with, uh, with Kirk Merritt, um, and, and the way it's kind of the running back room ha- has shaped out the other person that Kirk Merritt kind of reminds me of was, uh, Ty Montgomery, right? Like Ty Montgomery mm. had that same, like similar trajectory. And there was a lot of excitement about him being added to the new Orleans saints roster, but then it never really came about. So I'm curious about that Kirk Merritt potential fit for that role. And maybe this move off of Sir Roderick Thompson signals some good things so far in terms of how Kirk Merritt uh, has has developed there. Um, let's jump over to coaches to coaching real quick. The Saints move on from uh, Sterling Moore, one of their defensive backs coaches. But the the run of the big highlights so far of minicamp was that former New Orleans Saints wide receiver Ted Ginn Jr. was around and, and helping with the wide receivers. And that feels like that has a lot of benefit for guys like Chris Olave and, and Rashid Shahid. How cool was it to see you know Ted Ginn Jr. back in the building and kind of what was his role working with them during minicamp? Yeah, look, I mean, and Dennis Allen said it's a veteran presence who knows what the Saints are about and wants to do. And, you know, obviously Cody Burns is the main guy there, but somebody that's uh, got a lot of respect here for sure. So I'm mm-hmm. chumming it up with Michael Thomas today at practice. And so look, there's a lot to be uh, appreciated with guys like that. And look, Sterling Moore played a lot of years here, or not a lot of years, but he played a lot of years in the league 
He played mm-hmm. some of his years with the Saints. And look, I, I think with that kind of move, you know, look, Dennis Allen is a bread and butter, is secondary. Joe Woods is a secondary guy. Marcus yep. Robertson is a secondary yep. guy. It's just kind of one of those things, maybe by attrition, it's just, hey, we've got a lot of guys. Thanks, Sterling. We just kind of move on, I guess. But Sterling was, he's been a big part of this team for the past couple of years in a coaching capacity. Always hate to see that with those kind of guys. But look, um, you know, Ted Ginn Jr., I mean, again, you you know what he's capable of. And I think he had some of his best production when he was with New Orleans. He just yeah. was able to do a good bit of things with Drew Brees in the offense. And he made some big play. They should have won the championship game after what happened with him and making that catch a two minute warning. Sorry, fans. I don't want to bring up. The I was literally wounds, thinking, but, I was you know. literally picturing like when you said that he was chummered up with Michael Thomas, I was picturing that moment to where Michael Thomas runs up behind him and then Ted Ginn's kind of like doing this whole thing. Like, <laughs> Oh man, that it, it just pause the tape right there. Pause the tape. Stop the count. I don't need anything after that moment. Everything else yeah. is fine. Everything exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's just one of those things where they bring them in and sometimes it's a good introduction to coaching. They did this with Jari Evans last year, bring yep. him in as a guy, just kind of a, a, you know, intern, if you will. And uh, then Jari ends up being on the staff. And so maybe this isn't a route that Ted Ginn can go, um, you know, and it remains to be seen, but he will be back at training camp. So that's a, a good thing for him. And, you know, I think he can help, um, especially uh, you look at the big picture, Ted Ginn Jr., his, bread and butter for a while was the return game. And so yeah. you think if Rashid Shahid's not going to necessarily be your full-time returner, you bring in Kute and then Bowden, you know, as well, uh, maybe they have a vision there that, Hey, these, these guys can be helped by a Ted Ginn jr. If Shahid's still not your primary option to return kicks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Lynn Bowden was one of the most electrifying collegiate players we've seen in the last decade. I mean, he yeah. was remarkable. His senior season got impacted by the fact that they had to play him at quarterback. So all of a sudden, everything else kind of had to stop because of injuries at the position. But he ran for over 1,400 yards. He had 14 touchdowns that year, totaled over 1,800 yards in total uh, in terms of like rushing, receiving. The guy's electrifying. He just hasn't been able to catch on anywhere yet. Hopefully, uh, maybe he can find a way to do that uh, here in New Orleans. Uh, to wrap us up here, John, uh, offensive MVP, defensive MVP, when it comes to minicamp, your two biggest standouts on each side of the ball, uh, who stands out to you in those those perspectives? I mean, offensive MVP, I think the obvious answer was would probably be Chris Olave if you're assessing OTAs and minicamp. But again, I got to go with Derek Carr just because I've mm-hmm. loved what he's been able to do and just the way he's been able to move the offense, just the nuances and what he's been able to bring, uh, just the communication. The fact that these guys are having fun and chemistry, not that they weren't last couple of years, but it's a different type of vibe. I don't yeah. know how to oh, yeah. explain Taysom it. Talked just, about that quite a bit too. To, yeah. It's just, it's a different type of vibe that you get. And I think it's the excitement, whether you're a defensive player. I mean, everybody talks highly of Derek and the way he's approached the game and his worth at work ethic. And again, Derek's not coming in here to take over. He's coming in here to help win football games and try to get this team to championship. And so, Look, I, I have a strong appreciation for, you know, obviously what the quarterbacks have to do. We've seen it a lot, guys that have to come into a tough situation. Uh, but, you know, with Derek, man, he's just been outstanding so far. I think he's coming along great. You got the rapport with, with Pete Carmichael Bruin, the receivers, the chemistry there. So I, he has to be my MVP based off of what he's been able to do. Defensive side of the ball. Look, it's tough to gauge because, again, you're not doing full contact and stuff. Right. I would probably say it's a toss-up between Elante Taylor, maybe Marshawn Lattimore would be another one, or Paul Sinodipo. I just think the Saints have that. been pretty strong, in my opinion. Adebo had some breakups at, at practice today. Uh, but, look, I love Elante Taylor's energy, right? And, again, yeah. he may not start for this team, but his willingness and to, to short-term memory, as Dennis called it, or DA called it today, of just being he might get beat on a play but he comes right back and so i like the energy that most of these t- players are playing with it's something that taste even brought up today talking about jamal williams is he's the guy he's the hype man so we talked yeah. about mark ingram being the hype guy before yeah this seems like mark ingram on steroids in so to speak with <laughs> jamal williams i just feel like that energy is going to be something that carries over but look i think the secondary guys have been probably the, the standouts for me um, you know, but mainly those corners. I, I really think Lattimore's coming in here. I think he looks good. I don't want to say he's leaner or moves a little quicker, but I, I can definitely tell he's he's definitely turning on a dime and he looks really good so far. I like the idea of, of thinking of Jamal Williams 
as um as like Alvin Kamara, but you've given him uh like an X speed, like the the old Pokemon thing where you can give him that it boosts yep. their speed and then now they get to attack first. So just to yeah. give Jamal Williams a little bit of anime love, that's the way that I'm gonna kind of look at him. Uh, I do think that that's <laughs> important though, because like such a big part of what made Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram so much fun wasn't just about what they did on the field. It was their personalities off the field. And maybe we'll get to see a little bit yeah. of that come back between him and uh, Jamal Williams. There's so much that we didn't get an opportunity to go through Taysom Hill's role. Uh, you know, the, the, what, what are the ways that some of these other wide receivers are going to be able to contribute with the linebackers, you know, linebacker room really is going to look like so much of this. So if you want to find all of that, uh, first of all, we'll continue to be here, but you can also find it all over at Saints News Network, Sports Illustrated's fan nation site covering the New Orleans Saints, which you can find over at saints.media and si.com slash NFL slash Saints. John Hendricks at John J. Hendricks on Twitter, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson, Nola on Twitter. So much more for you here across the site and so much more on the way. We appreciate you very much for being here with us for another Saints News Network update. John, absolute blast, buddy. Thanks. Always appreciate it, man. Beautiful.